Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bits of Good Bootcamp. I am Ben, Array.Prototype.Map, Holmes, and in this video we're going to talk about how to use the dot .map function to actually turn a list of strings, objects, or whatever else into a list of actual elements on our page. Um, so we can see here is a very simple example. Um, we're just starting with this list of Dr. Seuss characters here, creatively named Thing 1, Thing 2, and Thing 3. So it's just a list of three strings, each defining a Dr. Seuss character. Um, and the only component we have on our page is this header here and our list of characters where we have this uh, container for future list items that's an unordered list or a UL, so we want to create a bulleted list here. And inside of this, what we want to generate is a list of the Dr. Seuss characters that we have up here. So for every string in this array, we want to create a list item on our page. Um, and just to refresh you guys on how to uh, write out a list item, you would just write uh, the li tag like so. And, uh, for example, if we wanted to show thing one on the page, we would do it like this. It would generate the bullet for us. Um, but instead of writing these all manually, we're actually going to figure out how to dynamically go through our string. And no matter how many items are in our string, we're just able to go over each element and generate an li from that list item. Um, and we're going to do this using the declarative functions that we learned a couple weeks ago. In this case, we're going to use the map function. So to refresh you guys a little on how map works, uh, I'm just going to create a dummy array here. Um, and inside of this, we're going to create a sort of modified version of our original array. Because if you remember, dot map basically loops over every element in the array. And for each element in that array, we change something about it. And we return from our callback exactly what we want to change that element to. So in this example, let's say we want to add a color to each of these strings. You know, like I said, thing one, it's red thing one, and blue thing two, or something like that. We just want to add to our string. Um, so what I'm going to call this array, how about colored uh, Seuss characters? And in order to generate this array, we're going to go through our Dr. Seuss characters and map each element to this modified version that we're thinking about. So I'm just going to look at our callback function here with an arrow function. Um, so the parameter to this function is going to be the uh, current element that we're iterating over, kind of like the for each loop. And what we return from this callback function is what we want to change character to. So in this case, I want to return um, character with a color added. So in this case, I'm just going to add a random color. I'm just going to say red. Um, and then I'm going to uh, throw the rest of the character string on the end of that. So now each of these will now be turned red. So maybe I'll change this to red Seuss characters. Um, and then I'm just going to console log this to show you guys what we end up with. So if I console log this, um, we should see inside of our console over here, click the up arrow, um, now we see the word red has been appended to all of our items. And it's going to be the original value of that element plus the word red. So that's how you use .map. You just return when you want to change it to. Um, so now we're going to go a little bit deeper and figure out how we can change a string into a piece of JSX, an actual element that we can put on our page. And that's very simple. Um, so what I can return from this is actually just some JSX, um, just as we do here. I'm going to return from this function instead. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to return a list item element and inside of this list item, I'm going to put the character string. So this way we generate our element, and each element is going to have the actual value at that uh, particular part in the array. So remember, in order to insert a JavaScript variable's value inside of our uh, JSX that we're writing, we have to use curly braces around that variable name. Otherwise, it's just going to put the word character inside of each li element, which is not quite what we're looking for. So we want to put brackets to say, hey, I want you to get the value of this variable and put it inside of the JSX that I'm returning. So that should be all we need in order to get this set up. So we have our uh, li generated. And over here, uh, the console log remained. So I'm going to show you what um, our list has uh, turned into. So in this case, our list of strings has now turned into a list of three objects. And each of these objects represents uh, a JSX element that we can throw on our page. Um, it's going to be a little bit different from when you printed out uh, element references back before we were using React, because React does it a bit differently. Um, the main thing to take away here is that uh, it tells us the type of element. In this case, we created an LI element right here. Um, and the props, all that uh, it contains right now is the string thing one. And that's going to be inside the children prop, um, which we don't have to worry too much about right now. But basically, we've proven that uh, we're able to turn strings into JSX for our entire array. 
And the nice thing is that React is actually smart enough where if you insert a list of uh, JSX elements, it's actually able to iterate over that list and put each JSX element on the page one after the other. So all I have to do, again, use my curly braces in order to uh, insert a JavaScript variable. If I insert our red Seuss characters list, it's actually going to go through each of those JSX elements and put it on our page. So in this case, we've created an li thing one, li thing two, and li thing three, one for each of these that we just console logged. Um, and I just want to show you, this is the format that you're going to see more often when you're working with React. Instead of creating a separate variable, doing the dot map and assigning it back uh, in order to insert, a lot of people actually just uh, take this entire statement and put it directly inside instead of having that middleman of creating another variable. And this is for a number of reasons. The main one is that uh, if, if you uh, looked at the prop passing section, um, props can come back on this parameter to this function. And uh, in order to access any of those props, we would have to uh, put our map function inside of this in order for it to actually work. Um, so that's just a little thing there um, where you're normally going to uh, not assign to like a separate variable. You're typically just going to insert your map directly into the JSX. Um, but in the end, it represents exactly the same thing. You just took out an, uh, an extra step. Um, so I have to remove my console log to get that working. But as you can see, exactly the same output. And if we want to make this even more simple, we can actually do an implicit return here. If you remember, um, if we omit the curly braces, we can actually get rid of the word return, and it will work uh, just the same. So in this case, I can actually get super fancy here and uh, just implicitly return our ally. So now we just have one line explaining, OK, I want to go over my Seuss characters, the list of strings. And I want to map each of those strings to an li. And then what gets returned from this is an array of JSX that can be then inserted into our page. Um, so hopefully that was helpful. Um, you can access uh, this code in the link directly below if you're watching from the Notion. I have a completed component here that uh, you can reference in order to see the full explanation of how to go from uh, one step to the next. All right.